Hi there, this is Chris, Chapman the Cap Motor Legends. Today I want to talk about one of our favorite helmets. It's the Shui Neotech 2. A couple of things I want to say. Firstly, we're going to talk about it in the context of the forthcoming Neotech 3. We're also going to talk about it in the context of the C5 and the new safety standard, which is ECE 2206. There's another context here that's, I think, equally important, and it's a time context in that we are recording this in February 2023. So what we're saying is relevant. I think we've given you the best information. We've given you the best timings we have for, for example, the arrival of the Neotech 3. But if you watch this video towards the end of 2023, so if you're watching this in November, December 2023 or in 2024, then what we're saying here may be out of date and totally irrelevant. Here at Motor Legends, we sell a lot of Shui Neotex. In fact, we probably sell more than anyone anywhere. It's a helmet that we just like. It also suits, it's got to be said, our kind of customer. Here we have lots of customers who are high mileage commuters, and we've got a lot of guys who do big tours around the world. So busy have we been, however, fitting these helmets that we've not felt a need to put much marketing behind it. I think Sean, who's the shop manager here, did a video when the helmet first came out in 2017. We've pretty much done nothing since but the market has changed. The Schubert C4 has been and gone. Since the Neotech was released, the new 2206 safety standard has been introduced. And in the Schubert C5, the Neotech now has what I suppose we would term a worthy competitor. By now, we also have a wealth of knowledge, experience, and understanding of this helmet. So we thought it might be revisiting the Neotech to talk about why you might, or conceivably might not, want to buy one today. Not everybody, of course, likes flip lid helmets. If you started riding when I did, the only helmet that was worthy of serious consideration was an RI race helmet of some sort. And for some people that still hasn't changed. Back then, the kind of people who wore flips, there was either the old Bill, there were couriers who liked to smoke when they rode, or it was the old farts who rode BMWs with tall screens and panniers. Motorcycle news journalists have also never liked flip lids. And I think historically, as aspiring racers, as most journalists have been aspiring racers, a flip lid represented the antithesis of everything that they believed in. But amazingly, even today, many journalists perpetrate the myth that a flip lid helmet is noisier than a full face one, when in fact, the received wisdom is exactly the opposite. Flip helmets are just more convenient on many levels. For example, if you go to a petrol station, you don't have to take the helmet off. A flip lid helmet is easier to put on and take off. But for me, the clincher is the ability to take on some fresh air when it's hot. So for example, if I'm riding down through France on a hot day on the, on the back road, when I hit a village, I'll slow down to 25, 30 miles an hour, whatever the limit is, I will lift the chin bar, I'll go through the village, get some fresh air in. As I leave the village, I'll pull the chin bar down and carry on, much refreshed by the fact that for half a mile or a mile, I've in essence been wearing an open face helmet. Commuters, do the same kind of thing. So the commuters who go from here in Guildford into London every day, once they reach Wandsworth and the traffic slows down to kind of walking space, walking pace, they will lift the flip lid and get some air in. Now, nobody advocates riding a flip lid at speed with the chin bar up, but at a certain speed, I think it's probably a risk that is worth taking. There's also a major safety benefit to wearing or riding in a flip lid helmet. And it's got to do with first responders arriving on the scene if you have an accident and you're lying on the side of the road. The fact is that no one is going to want to remove your helmet if they're on their own because they're going to be concerned about the liability if they do damage to your neck. It actually needs two trained personnel to take a full face helmet off. But if you're wearing a flip lid, what this red button does, it tells the first responder, do something with that you lift the helmet and then they can check your airways and if necessary, do mouth to mouth. Now, having found myself for whatever reasons in the motorcycle apparel business, I have been forced, I acknowledge, to change some of my prejudices that were so hard fought and so hard earned back in the 80s and 90s, such that today, when somebody objects to a flip lid helmet, my only response is, get over yourself. Shui introduced the 
Neotech, what we now know as the Neotech One, back in 2011. About six or seven years later, they bought out this helmet, the Neotech Two. So that was a while ago, but it's not a helmet that feels in any way outdated in the way that certainly the Schubert C3 is starting to. By now, of course, the Schubert C4 has been and gone. And what that means is that the Neotech goes head to head with the latest Schubert, the C5. But the Neotech still feels very much on the money. The upside, of course, is because it's been around for a while now, the upside is that it's a totally proven entity. It's a helmet that just works. And as a retailer, what we really like about the Neotech is that when we sell one, we don't see that customer again. Of course, we see them again, but they come back for boots, gloves, or whatever, but they don't tend to come back because their helmet has failed or because they're disappointed with the helmet. Now, as a helmet, the Neotech 2 has pretty much all the bells and whistles. It's got pretty good venting. There's a twin vent here up on the brow, another one on the chin. You've got an up and down oh, raised sun visor here. You've got a pin lock, not only a pin lock, but a pin lock 120 as standard. The helmet just feels superbly made. Now, I don't know whether you can remember that Volkswagen commercial a number of years ago, which was about the satisfying thud that a Volkswagen Golf door made when you close it, a kind of clunk. And you get that sense of heft, that sense of solidity, that feeling of precision with the Neotech 2. And you don't get that, I've got to say, with many helmets. One thing you don't get on the Neotech 2, I think it's one of the most disappointing aspects of the helmet, is you don't get much of a crack position. You try and keep, and keep it open and it'll just close in the wind. And we'd certainly like to see the Neotech 2 improved in that particular respect when the Neotech 3 gets released. We'll come on and talk about that in a minute. The comms setup for the Neotech 2 is also pretty much state of the art. It's been designed to integrate totally into the helmet. So here on the left hand side, this panel comes out, replaced by another panel with a couple of discrete buttons on. This panel comes away and you put another panel in and that's got the aerial hidden behind it, the battery and so on go on the inside. So with this helmet, you don't end, end up with any kind of protuberances on the side. It's a very discreet, very seamless system and it works and it works very well. We do occasionally have problems, but the truth is that whenever we do have a problem, it tends to be user error. The people, the guys, the girls who ride a Neotech all the time, who commute every day, they never have a problem with their comms. The problem comes when people buy the system and they go away for a tour maybe once or twice a year and they forget the sequence of buttons and they think the comms isn't working, but in fact, pretty much always it is. The comms for the Neotech, there are two systems, they're made by Senna. So there are two options. This is the mesh system that works on mesh and Bluetooth and this is the Bluetooth only system. In our book, not many people really need mesh, but people have heard about it. They've heard that it's better in some respects. So a lot of people think they need the mesh. The Bluetooth is for people who realize that in all reality, they probably don't. The real advantage for the mesh system in our book is that it comes with high definition speakers. And the way we see it, that's just a kind of, that's a piece of showy blackmail to get you to spend more money on the mesh system so that uh, you get the better speakers. Now, noise is always a contentious issue with helmets. And as the Neotech is very much marketed as a quiet helmet, it can lead to unrealistic expectations, let's say. For most people, the Neotech is a very quiet helmet with a provisor that provided it's been properly fitted. And what we mean is that um, we've managed to fit it with the proper cheek pad, so we've got a nice squeeze on the cheeks. We've got it snug around the head because if a helmet is loose, if it's not properly fitted, even the best helmet is going to be noisy. But the noise within a helmet can be affected by all kinds of factors, and those factors can impact different helmets differently. So for example, we're talking about the height of the screen, the position of the sat nav on the bike, the placement of wing mirrors. They can all affect the acoustics in a different manner. So there is absolutely no guarantee that a Neotech is going to be quieter than another given helmet on a given bike for another given rider. On the subject of expectations, it's got to be noted that some people's are simply unrealistic. At 80 miles an hour on the motorway, you simply cannot expect Jaguar levels of refinement. At speed, a bike is simply noisy. Now, we've got lots of experience with the Neotech. So for most people, we know this is a quiet helmet, but it won't necessarily be for everybody. And if that's the case, then maybe take the train, buy a car, maybe an electric car, because I hear they're really quiet.
For us here at Motor Latents, one of the things that we most like about the Neotech is the way it fits. Shoei helmets have a shape that is more oval than some helmets, but within the Shoei firmament, the Neotech is probably the most forgiving. That is to say that it's got a slightly rounder shape than most Shoeis. Now, it sounds immodest, but we probably custom fitted more Neotech 2s than anybody in the world. I have to say it's not a great claim to fame, but we kind of believe it's true. And with three different headliner thicknesses and four different cheek pad thicknesses, rare is the head that cannot be accommodated within its confines. Now, just before somebody comments that actually there are only three thicknesses of cheek pad, there are only three different thicknesses of cheek pad from Shui. We manufacture a fourth thickness because we do not at times believe that the 39 mil cheek pads give the squeeze on the cheeks that we would like. We know when we're doing a custom fit, what we're looking for in terms of a fit front to back. We know what we're after in terms of a squeeze on the cheeks. The only thing that we can never be quite sure of is the space and the fit around the side of the head, but we do have some tests for that also. What is never in doubt is the comfort of the facings on the Neotech. Most people, when they put a Neotech on, they say the same thing. They go, oh, that's nice. This is a nice place to put your head. This is a nice place to, uh, to do business in. So to summarize, we think the Neotech represents a winning package. There's no helmet that's going to work perfectly on everybody because we all have different shaped heads and we all have differently shaped faces. But if you want a flip lid or if you want a high quality premium flip lid, the Neotech is well appointed, it's beautifully put together, it's quiet, comfortable, has good comms, and it does pretty much everything pretty well. By the middle of 2023, the helmet manufacturers will only be able to make helmets that meets the new 2206, ECE 2206, that meets that new safety standard. And that's a new safety standard, came out a while ago. It's a more rigorous set of tests, or involved a more rigorous set of tests than was the case with 2205, which is the safety standard to which the Neotech 2 is accredited. What this tells us is that clearly the Neotech 2 has a finite life, but we know what's coming next from Shui, and it's not the Neotech 3. We don't know what's coming after that, but the earliest, therefore, and we can deduce this, the earliest that we're going to see a Neotech 3 is going to be, let's say, early, mid-2024. And if there's another helmet between the next one and the Neotech 3, it could be further back than that. So the question arises, is it worth holding off and waiting for the Neotech 3? Clearly, we cannot answer that. But there are some things that we should perhaps point out. If we see the helmet in 24, it could be towards the very end of the year. Initially, it will come in just plain colors because that's always the case when a manufacturer launches a new helmet. It could then be another full six months before we see the panoply of cheek pads and headliners that will enable us to custom fit it. So we could be at least 24 months away from a scenario where we can custom fit a Neotech 3 in a color that, for example, you might want. When it comes to the Neotech 3, we are hoping that they're going to improve the helmet, and certainly we'd like them to address the poor crack position on the Neotech 2. But we don't know what other things they're going to do because, in truth, the helmet is so darn good. We are assuming that they're not going to make the helmet worse, of course, although I suppose on one level that's what Schubert said when they bought out the C4, so it's possible. But my point is, if, that you're, if you're holding out for the Neotech 3 to be a 2206 helmet, we could be talking about a distinction perhaps without a difference. And that's because manufacturers like Arai and Shui have always tested to a higher level than the statutory minimum. So for example, recently the Shui Glamster was changed over from 2205 to 2206, but there was not a single change to the shell or the EPS. And that says something about just the standards that Shui test to. So if you want to wait for a 2206, 2206 Neotech, then no argument from us, by all means do so. But don't do so in the belief that you're necessarily buying a safer helmet, because that is not necessarily the case. Because in anyone's book, the Neotech 2 is still one of the safest motorcycle helmets on the market. As I think we've already suggested, the Neotech now has a worthy competitor in the shape of the Schuberth C5. The C5 came out in 2022, and when Schubert put this helmet together, they did, it has to acknowledge, very much base it on the Neotech. And as the market leader, that is to be expected. Even the internal shape of the helmet is more like the Neotech. So this is still a little bit rounder than the Neotech, but it's more like a Shui and less like a Schubert than, than any 
shoe with helmet I've come across before. With the helmet, you've got the same Senna Com system, although with the C5, there's only a mesh version. But of course, remember that a mesh system can be used in a Bluetooth mode as well. But the big news when the C5 was announced was that for the first time, we would be able to change the shape, would be able to do a custom fitting on a shoe berth. And I think they've made a pretty good fist of it. In fact, in theory, we have even more flexibility with the C5 than we do with the Neotech. In that we can, in theory, change the internal shape. With a shoey around the head, we can either put a thicker pad in or a thinner pad so we can make it more generous or less generous, but we cannot alter the shape. With the C5, by putting a thicker pad here, thinner pad at the side, we can actually give it a more oval or a longer shape. But the system is not perfect. The pads, it's got to be said, are not easy to change in the way that they are in the shoey. We also think that the liners can package slightly illogically. And importantly, Shoebirth expect customers to pay for those liners. And we don't think that's particularly acceptable. You spend a lot of money on a helmet. It's not on to expect a customer to pay in some cases up to a hundred pounds to get a perfect fit. Although what I would say is that if you come to Moto Legends for a helmet fitting and you need a series of pads, we don't charge for them. But there are still a couple of issues with regard to fit. And the first is that the C5 only comes in two shell sizes. The Neotech comes in three. And it is hard to get a perfect snug fit when you've only got two shell sizes. The closer fitting the shell to a particular head, head size, the easier it is to make up the difference with the soft furnishings with the soft pads and so on. Especially as with the Shoebirth, there's no difference in the EPS size within the two shell sizes. So small, medium, large have the same EPS in the same shell and in the larger shell, L and XL have the same EPS. So getting a perfect fit is not going to be easy. There's another issue with the C5 and that it's, you can only custom fit three of the six sizes. So we can custom fit a medium, we can custom fit a large and we can custom fit an XL. And we can't do anything with the other size, with the other sizes and to us, we don't really understand that. It just feels a little bit half-hearted. Maybe it's that Shoebirth is testing the water, but it's less than perfect. The bottom line, I think it is more likely that we can get a near perfect fit on a Neotech than we can with a C5. Although it's going to depend to a degree on the shape of your head. Of course, for some, the main selling point for the C5 is going to be the ECE 2206 accreditation. And if that is the case, if that's a box that you feel you need to take, then go for it. But I think what we would suggest, because we feel that comfort is a hugely important issue, before you make that decision, go and see someone, us or another dealer, and get both the Neotech and the C5 custom fitted, make them as good as they can possibly be, and then you can make a proper informed decision. We really do rate the Neotech. Our customers seem to love it and the way it rides, and so do we. We think that for most riders, it's simply the best, most usable, most wearable, most flexible, most comfortable, most dependable helmet that money can buy. That it's going to be replaced soon by the Neotech 3, certainly in the foreseeable future, is not in dispute. But how far off that date is, is at present unknown. The C5, the Schubert C5, is the only realistic option when it comes to a premium quality flip lid helmet. There's no other helmet on the market, there's no other flip lid helmet on the market that comes close. And in fact, there is very little clear blue water between the two helmets, the Shoei and the Schubert. Both are very, very good. The Neotech, perhaps by the fact that it's been on the market for longer, is a little bit more proven. And the chance we think of getting a perfect fit are slightly better with the Neotech than they are with the C5. But the C5 may be better if you have, like I do, a slightly rounder head. If 2206 is not your overriding consideration, then I think it's all gonna come down to fit. If after all that, it's too close to call, then I think this is gonna be one of those very rare occasions where we say to somebody, just go for something that matches the color of your bike. So I hope you found our little discourse interesting. If you'd like to know more about the helmets, then visit motorlegends.com. If you'd like to learn more specifically about the C5 or the Neotech 2, if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there. We've created a couple of pages that have got all the helmets on. When you're there, you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail. You can check on availability. And obviously if you wanted to buy one of the helmets, you could do that there and then. When you buy from us, we try to make the process 
as simple, straightforward and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to buy something from us. We have the best price promise in the business. Now, John Lewis was rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find anyone selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. Now there are a few terms and conditions attached to what we call our price beat. Nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to try to price beat us, then I suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to see bulletins from us about new products, then again, if you go to the screen at the top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up, click on that and in future you'll receive our email bulletins. If, however, you prefer to get your information videographically, that is to say, in this form, we'd be simply delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Finally, I'd like to make a play for our little shop here at Moto Legends. We are based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station, and as I suggested, it's a small shop with a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than four million pounds of merchandise arranged over three different floors. Now, technically, that makes this the second largest motorcycle apparel store in the country. But we think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have in the building. We're all about service. We're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot, where we have the highest five-star ranking in the business. And when you come and see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get to some of one of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.